Jimmy Hinson climbed into his car, pulled the door close, and took a breath. He had a long drive ahead of him. Road tripping all the way to Virginia from Texas was not for the faint of heart, but Jimmy couldn't miss this for the world. He had a chance to see his idol, game composer Jack Wall, in person. If he was very lucky, Jimmy might even get the chance to spend some time with Jack and share some of his own music compositions with the man who'd inspired him so much over the years. In the back of Jimmy's mind, he hoped that maybe, just maybe, Jack might be impressed by his work. He might even hire Jimmy to work on an upcoming game like Mass Effect 2. But hey, only a naive idiot would put much faith in something like that happening. But then, Jimmy thought, if it meant seeing his lifelong dream come true, maybe it was worth being a bit of an idiot. Once upon a time, Jimmy Hinson was walking along the road on a cold winter day with a friend. A few inches of fresh snow lay on the ground, and the world around the pair was bright and white. They crossed into a parking lot, where they saw some tracks had been left by a car. Someone had spun donuts in the fresh snow, so that the tyres had left big giant circles crushed into the ice. Big giant circles, the friends agreed, sounded like it should be the name of the band. And so, when Jimmy needed a username with which to share some music online, he knew just what to call himself. Jimmy had found his way to Overclocked Remix, a website which catered specifically to eager gamers and musicians who wanted to share and enjoy reworked covers of classic video games tunes. The website had been started by eager gaming music fans in 1999, and had grown over the years to become the de facto place to find and share gaming remixes. As the site's reputation grew, so did its user base, and Jimmy, or as he was now known, Big Giant Circles, was one of the many artists who were embraced by the budgeting community. Jimmy began sharing his own remixed music tracks with the group. The game he borrowed from the most was Final Fantasy Adventure, a fun Game Boy game which, because of its simple audio, was ripe for expansion and development from a musician with access to a variety of more advanced musical tools. Jimmy's hero at the time was Jack Wall, a composer who'd worked on some of the most influential games of the past decade. Jack was also responsible for Video Game Live, a series of music concerts which played live versions of classic gaming compositions. In anticipation of one Video Game Live show that Jimmy would be able to attend, he thought it might be fun to create a remix of one of Jack Wall's songs. Jimmy worked with a couple of friends from Overclock Remix to create Global Empire, a remix of music from the cult classic Bioware game Jade Empire, which Jack had composed. Eager at the chance to meet their hero, the group presented Jack with their track when they got a chance to meet him at Video Game Live. The seasoned composer was impressed with their work, and was glad to have helped inspire an up-and-coming generation of new gaming composers. Jack swapped contact details with the group, and gave them a secret suggestion. They should try some Mass Effect remixes as well. Mass Effect 2 was coming out soon, and while Jack didn't want to say any more, he'd be happy to hear their takes on the sounds from his work on the original game in the popular science fiction series. Jimmy rushed home, excited at the prospect of making something that Jack would enjoy, and which might, if he was very lucky, get included in an upcoming game. This was all the incentive Jimmy needed, and soon, he had a Mass Effect remix to send off to Jack. As it turned out, Jimmy's idol was incredibly pleased with his work, and even asked Jimmy's permission to send off a sample to Bioware for their opinion. Of course, Jimmy was thrilled at this news. Success was so close that he could almost taste it. That, though, was the last news that Jimmy heard from Jack for a long time. As Mass Effect 2 was still a long way from completion, there wasn't much to discuss, and Jimmy found that, agonisingly, the longer he waited to hear back from Bioware, the less likely it seemed that he'd ever achieve his dream. Something had to be done. Jimmy needed to take action. And so, he found himself on the long drive to Virginia for the special 100th Video Game Live, in a last-ditch attempt to get Jack Wall's attention. Jack was very friendly with Jimmy, but he wasn't sure that the young musician had quite the right skill set for what Mass Effect 2 required. While Jimmy had been sending him remixes that felt very modern and quirky, Bioware was looking for a more traditional, orchestral score for their new game. 
Luckily though, Jimmy had come prepared with a secret weapon up its sleeve. He'd anticipated that remixes might not be the best way to get Bioware's attention, and he'd brought some more traditional, original pieces of music as well. These pieces had been meant for a different project, and were far darker and moodier than the upbeat remixes Jimmy had been sending Jack up to that point. As Jack listened, he was seriously impressed. This was exactly what Bioware was looking for. About a month after Jimmy had met with Jack at Video Game Live in his desperate attempt to get the composer's attention, he was officially brought on board and joined Wall of Sound, a group of composers that Jack had assembled to make music for Mass Effect 2. Since then, Jimmy has gone on to compose music for several video games, turning his passion into his profession. He still finds the time though, every now and then, to remix classic game scores and to release them on Overclocked Remix. The moral here is that sometimes dreams do come true. You may see your personal hero, the person who inspires you the most, and you may wish for a chance to work with them. Just like Jimmy, it's entirely possible that this might happen one day, if you're willing to work for it. Dreams don't come true unless you're willing to fight. You have to put everything into achieving your goal, tackling big problems, and refusing to give up when things seem impossible. Most importantly though, it's worth remembering that sometimes, believing in your dreams may feel a bit idiotic. In practice though, sometimes it's worth being an idiot if it helps you to get what you so desperately want out of life.